Okay. Alright, Tim, so here we go. So this is the ring that you had, except for this piece here, I made a T-spline shell. And I took this and I split this along this curve here. And then I offset this top surface here. So you can see there's an offset here of 0.4 millimeters. So this is my surface that I'm going to use. So now I take, this is the, uh, the tools from uh, Rhino Gold. So I go in here to the artistic and they've got this tool called Texture 3D. Click on that, I grab my surface, I stick it on here. Um, it's already applying, a, right here you can see the um, texture it has. This is like a bamboo. I'm gonna change this. So I just have to wait, there you go. So here's here's a bunch of text texture maps in here. And there's the bark one that I'm using for you. So I double click on that. Now it's a matter, in order to get the detail like what we have over here, um, I start working with the uh, the UVs. So in this particular case, we want to adjust the, the U counts. And as I do this, and I think I had this up to like 15 or 16. There you go. So there it's giving me a preview. Now, the next thing I have to do is I have to tell it, okay, well, I have to tell it what the height is I want. Now, you can flip the maps. That's what all these buttons here are for, is for flipping the map. Um, I'm going to take this down to about 0.4. And when I'm done, I just hit this little hourglass here. And it's going to go, and let's wait a second and see what it does. It takes a minute to, for it to build all the meshes. I don't know exactly, but I'm almost positive that this basically is rolls the surface out and probably applies the texture to a flow-on surface kind of uh, situation. And it's just stuff that's all happening in the background, so you don't have to do it all. And then you don't have that seam either which is kind of the nice part too, using this tool. It's one of the reasons I really like it a lot. So it's just gonna take a minute here. I'll just pause and come back. Okay, so here I am back, Tim, and as you can see, it's showing the geometry and you can see how it, it kind of poked through here. Um, so then I just click this check mark to accept and the computer takes a minute because it's finishing up converting the file. It just takes a second here. And when it's done up here, it'll this will all disappear up here where it says creating meshes. Once the mesh is all ready to go, and there we are. So this is what I have. So now what I did, I took the ring rail and I extruded um, a cylinder and I made the cylinder a little bit larger so it came up in here um, for my inner ring. And then I converted that to a mesh and just simply did um, mesh Boolean difference. And that cut all this out. And that way my inner ring here that I made then is just nice and smooth. So this little piece in here then, I put a cap on it, as you can see with your own model. And um, that's pretty much it. And, there, and that's how it kind of works. So hopefully that helps you and answers your question. Kev out.